All right, guys, we have a special guest in the building all the way from Orlando, Florida. You may have seen him in your girl's DM. You may have seen him on Instagram, posting up with the cool cars. You may have even seen him on TikTok, man. But hey, he's here in the flesh. Give it up for Austin Dunham, everybody. Yo, 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 what's up, man? Thanks for having me. Hey, right, of course, man. Thanks for coming on the show and kicking some mm -hmm. game. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, uh, you know, two handsome men on the podcast, they're going to listen. They're going to listen to this yeah, one. Yeah, they better listen. listen to this one. Let's go. Let drop some game for real. Let's go. So, hey, listen. So, real quick, people who do not know who you are, you know, maybe talk about, you know, yeah. age, where you're from, hobbies, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, my name is Austin Dunham. I am from Florida. Uh, I do YouTube videos online. I started off in the fitness space, creating what's called a calisthenics content or bodyweight training tips, tutorials. Um, I have an online fitness business. I have a few things that I do. And then uh, honestly, about five, six months ago, I started creating more red pill dating content on my yeah. second channel, Austin Dunham Vlogs, and that has been taking off doing well and kind of establishing myself in a new niche, new space, which is awesome. So yeah, that's about it. Awesome, man. That, that's awesome. Now, have you, uh, of course, when you, when you create red pill content, it's almost like you're creating content that is frowned upon by, um, I would say the rejected women who are fat, overweight with yellow hair and mm -hmm. beta males. So have you experienced, um, you know, any type of hate with making that Austin Dunham vlog channel with the red pill? Oh yeah, bro. Like, so me, I tend to not read a lot of comments. I'll okay. read like the first, first couple, like, yeah. a few hours, you know, check yeah, it after fresh. that, yeah. after that, I don't be reading comments really. Cause like, I, I don't like the hate negative comments. It messes up my energy, my vibe. And I know that I'll always have more supporters than I do haters. Mm -hmm. But of course, like this style of content is very, in a sense, controversial to some people. Yes, it should and be. And exactly. And we, we both know that most of the world, including guys, are blue pill type of dudes. So when they do discover this, they kind of, they say to themselves, like, there's no way this is true. Or true, this guy true. is a woman hater. Or... So some feminists, it could come off like a bit misogynistic, but mm -hmm. uh, the truth is, is that it's just, we're given the reality of things, including female nature and how things actually are and whether or not they want to take it and accept it is up to them. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing I tell guys is, dude, look at the statistics. Um, mm -hmm. Why do you feel like you're going to be different? If in my, in my county, in Orange County, um, where I'm, I'm at in California, the divorce rate's 81%, 81, yeah. right? So you're telling me if you went to a bar right now and asked for a drink and the bartender goes, hey, by the way, there's an 80% chance you'll die. You think you're going to be that one who won't? That's just being, that, that's just yeah. delusional. Yeah. I feel like you're just like being like thinking really logically and look at the numbers of stuff and how statistics kind of play a part into things. So I, I get that example all the time too. Yeah. So I tell guys, listen, it happens every day. There's like, there's a new simp on world star every day getting yep. recorded and embarrassed and you yep. think it won't be me though my girl would never dog every girl and every man is capable of doing that they're yep. all capable of it so why don't you think that won't happen to you you know what i mean yeah, to me red pill to me has made me just listen it hasn't made me bitter it's made me aware when i was more blue pill i was like okay girls when i find the right one she won't do that Mm -hmm. there's, there's no such thing as the right one the right one yeah that's, that's the yeah that's the thing. Yep. no such thing as the one no such thing as the right one occasionally you might come across a good like one, yeah. a rare type of yeah. like unicorn type of girl but Facts. you dudes don't realize that that can change at any moment any is how she is in the now like she, she's acting like that right now and some of these girls are very very good actors too but give it six months to a year you'll see you'll different probably be yep yep I tell them, it's funny, I'll, I'll get DMs like this, probably you do too. Hey, hooking up with this girl, things are going great. All of a sudden, ghosted. I'm like, yeah, it happens. Bro, bro. <laughs> Literally everything that these girls do at this point in time doesn't surprise me. And you'll be surprised that like, I, not to brag, but I have money. I have status. Yeah, yeah, I've been told that I, I look good too. And that, sh that shit still happens to me. Of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You just because you're just because you're red pilled and you read all 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 of Rolo Tomasi's books. I mean, you're 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 uh, you're 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 prick. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, you can't get hurt proof. Like, you, you yeah, just, no, bro, you can still get got to. 
Yeah, it's inevitable. Even looking at like Quavo and the Saweetie situation, man, like wild it happens to A-list celebrities. Come True. On. So I feel like uh, the red pill has made me aware. So, for example, I'll talk to girls sometimes and this is this throws them off. So I tell this one girl that I met, hey, I'm coming out there in um, August to Miami. And I said, hey, if we're still cool, I'll hit you up. She goes, why wouldn't, why wouldn't we, we be still cool? I'm like, in three or four months from now, you, dude, you can wake up tomorrow morning and go, screw up. <laughs> yeah, totally forget about you. Every, exactly. A lot can go wrong in three to four months, man. That's what I say. And she was like thrown off by that. I was like, why is, why are you thrown off? Like, that's just, that's just the sad truth. You could legit wake up and go meet a baller and never speak to me ever again tomorrow. Yep. And, yep. I, and that's not me being bitter. It's just me being aware. Yeah. But the thing is like, if you tell them that they'll deny it all day oh, long. Of course they will. That's, that's why I, I honestly, the Red Bull stuff, I keep a lot to myself when I deal with these. I don't talk to them about it. Oh, of course like, not. When I, when I see them act a certain way or, when they when things come up and I recognize it, I don't try to explain to them like, oh, you know why you're acting like this or no, I just I just let it be, man. But yeah, you're right. You're right. True. Um, I, yeah, it's funny Um, when girls. So some girls um, found out about it, about my TikTok. And mm -hmm. um, where was I going with this? They feel like, oh, when they when they meet me in person, they're like, wait, like you're not this guy. I'm like, listen, the red pill is just a mindset. I'm not out here speaking on it and talking about it it's just I'm, I'm just aware of what you can do of what you could do yeah. to me. so i'm not naive to you yeah i agree that happens to me all the time um girls i'm dating they'll find my youtube channel <laughs> vlog channel they're like I'm binge watching hey, is this is this the same person i'm dealing with because like obviously in person like i'm pretty i'm straightforward but i'm actually like a nice guy i'm not a nice guy respectful. But I'm a, respectful. yeah i'm respectful you know what i mean yeah. but um they, they think just through the videos, I'm sort of some sort of like asshole, but I tell them like how you said it, it's, it's a mindset, it's in my head, you know what I mean? So. Absolutely, for sure. So um, this is, it leads to my next question. Mm -hmm. Why do you think men detest or don't want to, or don't want to take the, uh, the RP? I feel like men, I kind of detest the red pill and the explanations within it is because they have hope. Yes, <laughs> they have hope. They're hopeless <laughs> romantics for less of better ones. Yeah. So they're like, OK, maybe this has happened with another girl, but there's no way all women can be like that. And like how we said before, it's not necessarily all women are like that. All women are capable of acting this way, given the certain circumstance or the guy that they're dealing with. Yeah, so yes. maybe with you, she's cooperative, yeah. submissive, doing everything you want. But the guy, the other guy she's dealing with, she's a complete like towards, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, facts. So like, it, it just depends. And that, and that type of energy can be directed towards you at any given moment. And I feel like um, guys really won't take the full red pill unless they deal with, you know, multiple situations to where they're like, okay, I get it now. And I just, yeah. And a lot of guys are young too. So they haven't had time to like really experience uh, females and what they kind of bring, but give us some time. By the time they're thirty, they yeah. Yeah, for me, um, I didn't take it till later because I was getting, I was, I was hopeful, like you mentioned, hopeful that this mm -hmm. is not how all women act. This is not how they all are. I'm, I'm gonna find my one, and I can just be myself and sit on the couch with her and watch Bachelor and eat ice cream and we're all everything's ever happy ever after. Like no, yeah. that's not another reason why I feel like men uh, don't want to take it is because, especially on TikTok. The LGBTQ feminist community is very strong. True, and true. It's our, listen, man, either you bow to us and be an ally or we're going to come for you. And mm -hmm. a lot of men don't have the balls to go, okay, then come for me then. Bro, yeah. did you see when, when they tried to cancel me? No, I didn't. What happened? You didn't see that? No, I did not see that. <laughs> All right. I've talked about this on other podcasts, but hey, I'll, 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 real quick. Okay. I made a video saying, listen, guys during quarantine girls are going to download these dating apps because they're bored not because they want to see you they want they can't go to the club and get attention can't go to the bar and get attention so the, the dating apps the, the next best place for attention yeah if you try to set the date and she hits you with you know what when the vaccine comes out you know what when this all clears up then we'll i'll see you i said drop the b word okay just drop it right mm -hmm. now, 
from zero to 55 K no smoke. It was an echo chamber in my comments. Like, dude, where's the hate? Like, I know mm -hmm. someone hates me. Like, I don't see any hate. I'll give me one or two comments per video. That's negative. But other than that, that's anyone can deal with that. Yeah. A girl with half a million followers found my account. Which came at you. And sent the wolves. Okay. I yeah. woke up to about like 1200 comments, 800, 900 followers. Like, oh shoot, what happened? And I'm mm -hmm. just seeing all these she, her, LGBTQ plus BLM no. in my bio. I'm like, oh, all right, they found me. Okay. But here's how the TikTok algorithm works. They don't know what's a hate comment or a comment that's good. So the mm -hmm. fact that the, all these women are commenting on my page, TikTok's, oh, they must love it. So they're shoving all my videos on their For You page. And it was just, yeah. just, just getting destroyed, right? Yeah, that's I, good. I, uh, I know who I am, so I didn't let their comments get to me. Mm -hmm. But then other creators with million, 1.5, 750, 500, like they, they all started because basically people were starting to get their most viewed and liked video from me. So oh, okay. I started to clout chase. Oh, people are getting hella views off this guy. I'm next, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone just took turns, right? Eventually they found my government name, reported the businesses I own and run, uh, harassed my mom at my, her job harass my friends who are tagged in my Instagram photos, hate DMs. They did oh. everything they could do. Like everything. Bro, yeah. That's that's the worst. So you low-key got doxxed in a, a, a way. True, but I didn't yeah. let it stop me because I knew that this was a test. Like mm -hmm. if I if I can I can rise from the ashes from that, I can go, I can dude, I've already experienced the highest level of hate. Yeah. So you can't do much to me anymore because I've already experienced that at the highest level. One thing about the red pill excluding the dating room is that obviously seeing the world for how it actually is. Mm -hmm. One thing I realized is that everything is temporary. Like nothing is truly permanent. So sure. even in regards to your um, hate situation, even with look, look at six nine. At some point, everybody will forget about it. True. And you will watch your life, bro. So it might feel like the end of the world right now. At that, at that moment, it did, but not anymore. Yeah, exactly. Shit always will blow over. So and, I, and I, my favorite comments are when people go, bro, this guy legit was under under the like the most hated guy on TikTok for two weeks straight, and and is still here. Like salute, like they, yeah. they, they give you respect. I bet you there's some girls who made some comments and videos about me. Like damn, he's still there, still there, still we going, still, spreading we, the message. We, we tried, we did everything we could. We got our our biggest guns, biggest muscles. They couldn't do it either, and I'm still just posting every day. Bro, you probably even made it bigger because think about how many people, of course, found the hate stuff, but found your content and found it interesting and was like, okay, it's kind of making sense. Let me subscribe, follow him and kind of nice. learn more. So, and hey. yeah, man, I, I love my channel because it, it feels likewise for you. It's like, it feels good when a guy DMs you, hey, look, like you saved my life. Like, yeah, like, like mm -hmm. we're providing real value and the universe is going to start to reward us with not just money, but other opportunities, exactly. and et cetera, like that. So I, I like what I'm doing. Um, so I, I can't stop because I'm not being canceled by the people who support me and being canceled by people who wouldn't support me in the first place. So why, exactly. why does it matter? Why does it matter? Yeah. Gotcha. That's, that's so right. um, next thing is uh, let, let, let's get, let's get the tips for the boys run. All right. Yeah, so first, so first date. Okay. The guy has the date confirmed to Friday night. What should he do? Um, okay, no, the date hasn't been set. Let's go even for a step back. The date okay. hasn't been set. Um, and he's talking to the girl, she's responding. What should he do? What should he do to set the date? Like the text or you should he call? Like, let's get into it. Gotcha. So my first date rules is one, um, if you have the time and depending on who else you're dealing with, set it up as fast as possible. Yeah, get to it. Yeah. So like, don't be texting for five days plus no. all these messages. No. Um, if anything, girls have always told me like, before we first dated, like your energy was so low. Like I was literally three messages a day, type exactly. of thing, you know what I mean? And I set it up fast. So set it up as soon as you can, whenever your, your schedule is available for you and set the date based around what you want to do and your interests. Yes. And, uh, uh, logistical wise is kind of getting a little bit more deeper into it, but sure. set the dating logistics, um, in your favor. So, yes. and the reason why you want to do that is because initially you want to get her to start investing off bat, um, more than you are. So if let's say there's an area by your place, make her drive and come to you. There you go. Yeah. I do the same. 
Yeah. yeah don't negotiate and be like okay um i can meet you halfway or i can i can drive to you god forbid like definitely don't do that and then another thing is keep your investment super super low in regards to where you go money spent everything first date is literally like a i see it as like an interview process to yes. see if she's not crazy and or if if y'all could have sex with each other pretty much got you so let's stop there all right I just had a girl on my show prior to you, right? Mm -hmm. Her name is Morgan May. She is uh, basically a, a recovered feminist into red pill. Like she even says uh, on her channel, I'm hypergamous, like even admitting it, right? So I had her on my show and we, we disagreed about this. She, she said, what she said makes sense, but I'm like, still no. Her, mm -hmm. her um, rebuttal to me was, I, I said that to her, the whole low investment is our first date. She said, oh, I'm only into high value men. And if a high value man won't take me to a place that's, you know, nice, that shows his effort, I'm putting in like $2,000 worth of money into my appearance. I deserve a place like, okay, I feel you, but why would I spend upwards of a hundred or some dollars when I just met you? You may never see me ever again. And, you know, and she was like, oh, well, if 50 to 100 bucks will set you back so far, then maybe you shouldn't date. I'm like, okay, I, you know, what's your response? You're kind of rolling your eyes a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure this type of girl uh, who would say something like that. Um, is she like- She's in her 30s, uh, so she, she, she's, she's older. She's in her 30s. Okay, in her 30s. She got a lot going for herself, like has a lot of money and all that? She said she's uh, middle six figures, so like probably 100 plus. Okay, gotcha. So maybe her, her expectations are a little bit higher. True. But I feel like sh she's attracting a lot of guys who are trying to qualify her. That's the yes, thing. Yes. Like as a dude, you don't want to feel like you're you're qualifying yourself for the woman. Yes. It should be the opposite. Like she qualifies herself for you. So, and like I said, no matter what you do, the first date should be low investment because, like you said, girls are super volatile. At any moment, they can never see you again. He, uh, he that's, used that's, the wrong fork at dinner. I'm 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 uninterested. Exactly. Like. <laughs> It, they don't like the way you phrase a certain sentence. Oh, I'm yeah, never sure. going to see this dude again. And you just spent <laughs> like 50, 100, 200 dollars or however much. Yeah, wasted. exactly. So yeah, don't waste your time. And um, if she's dealing with dudes like that and has a rule by that, then yeah. she she's guaranteed dealing with simps or guys who are trying to qualify themselves. And I bet you she'll break that rule for a guy she's really attracted to or like the alpha male that she kind of sees. And it's funny. She even mentioned that as well. Like the whole, because again, like, she, and she's, you know, she makes content. She pops up on the red pill for you page and guys always hit her with that. Mm -hmm. But it's, I get where she's coming from. She's a high six figure earner in her thirties. You know, I bet you the dates she went on when she was 19 and 20 are different than now she, when she's 30, I get it, but I'm still on the low investment side. And another yeah. thing for me, even when I become 30, I'm still doing low investment because it's like, if I'm, I feel like I'm the prize. I'm the breadwinner. I have the status. Girls want to be me. Guys want to be me. Girls want to fuck. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm that dude. So you should be trying to, to get my attention, right? And, and, and try to win me over. Because guess what? I can replace you with a snap, right? Exactly. Yeah. High value men in that top ten percent work. Like we're, we're rare. You know what I mean? Not every. every mm -hmm. It's like it's like, like for example, Kevin Samuel said girls who graduate college with the guy their you know their peers they don't even want them they have mm -hmm. no job no money they much rather go date a guy 10 years older right so it's like we're yep. the the top we're at the top of the food chain you know that's what i'm, I'm gunning for so exactly i feel you. Uh, yeah if you if you have that mindset about yourself uh the high value stuff too and you do have a lot going to yourself then honestly you can accept nothing less nothing less. that's yeah. why that's why the red pill is also about total self-improvement and obviously become the best version of yourself that you possibly can be physically, financially, and all the above so that you can uh, guarantee to be the prize and that you, you don't have to settle for like rules like that woman just told you about. Absolutely. I feel that, man. Uh, yeah. I'm totally into being the best version of myself. That's why I grind so much, you know, videos every day, content, podcasts, YouTube, I try to do as much as I can because eventually this will, this will pay off, dude. 100%. Yep, sure will. Mm -hmm. So now let's keep it moving, right? So the guy made the guy made the date. The girl showed the girl. The girl drove to his house. What's now his next steps? I don't know. Maybe conversation or like touch. touch I don't know. Like you go ahead. Okay, gotcha. So they went out somewhere. Or she drove to his house. She drove out to a bar close to him because you said you want him okay, her to invest. So she drove twenty minutes yeah. away to hit to a bar by a script. 
Okay, gotcha. So basic first date rules. Uh, greet her with the hug. Uh, okay. Kind of break that touch bear, bear okay. off that. It's a little subconscious things that uh, will help lead into the bedroom. Now, might sound sleazy, but with any sort of first date or interaction with a girl, you want to escalate as fast as you can to intimacy. That's what I've learned, right? Otherwise, you're, you're going to come off too platonic, too friendly, and you don't want that, right? Yeah, the girl that messed up, man. Yeah, the girl is there and interested in you because at some point she wants you to bone her, right? So little things like that, uh, touch barrier. And then whenever you do kind of get into the place, sit down and um, just let her talk. Yes, like let her talk, let her talk, let it flow, ask questions, but don't be like super interviewee, but kind of ask questions, but give your statement on whatever she says back. And then just let her talk, like let her flow and don't reveal too much about yourself. Don't brag about yourself. Don't go off on a tangent about the things you hate or don't like. Don't reveal a lot about yourself. Maintain that sort of mysterious vibe about yourself. And if the girl is asking, let's say by the second date, um, you know, I, so actually they will apologize for talking so much. That's what I'm trying to say. So, you know, you did it right when they apologize for talking so much yeah. and they ask you to interject or they mention, oh, I don't know much about you. Like, tell me about yourself though. What about you though? Like, that's how you know you're doing it right. Absolutely. Um, I tell guys, I made a video um, saying, yo guys, you need to shut the F up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying a lot of guys what happens is, especially when they feel like they're on a date with a girl above their pay grade, you know, like they feel like, mm -hmm. oh, I never got this one before. They yeah. try to sell themselves. Oh, yeah. I've been here. Oh, you know, oh, Chris Brown. Pff, that's big bro. I can call him right. Like, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, doing the most because yeah. and she can sense that I always ask girls I'm on a date with them. What's the one thing a guy can do to ruin a date? And they always say, like, just doing too much. Right. Because mm -hmm. she can sense he's trying to sell. And girls, yeah. I feel like when I be with a guy, they feel equal to or most of the time better than. Mm -hmm. so if you're trying to sell yourself, now you're coming from below. You know what I mean? Exactly. It should be even or she should feel like, she, oh, this guy's too good for me. What yeah. You this is all this and all that shit. I'm doing nothing. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you got to remember dating dynamics too. like women, like men, like men who are better than them. They like men who um are the prize in their eyes and if that gets thrown off through you trying to sell yourself then that's a huge turn off absolutely um mm -hmm. i'm trying to think of another thing guys will ask during this first date okay okay one thing i like to do um is i try to uh, oh this is important too when you you met you talked on mysteriousness right mm -hmm. for example you drive a cool car the c7 super set car Let's mm -hmm. just say you found her through, I don't know, man, I'm just making this. So you met her out and in, in in about, you guys never exchanged social media. Okay. Let's just say you took an Uber to your first date. Okay. Yeah. All of a sudden on second day, you pick her up in the C7. She'll be way more impressed because she's like, damn, he didn't use this as like a, as a way to get my attention. Yeah. So, you know? yeah, I, I tell guys, like if, if you're in a position where you have nice things, for example, mm -hmm. Uh, you said C7, by the way, so it's a C8. Oh, C8, my bad, C8, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's yeah. Um, but yeah, don't try and openly show those valuable or nice things too yeah, fast. Too fast. Let them that's kind true. of reveal themselves naturally. Uh, so for example, like if I go out, on a, I have two cars. I have a Camaro and a C8. But sometimes I'll take the Camaro or depending on how I'm feeling, I'll take the C8 if we're Ooh. going like to a, a nice place. But do I openly park? right where we're um staying at do i offer to pick her up because i want her to see my car like no i don't do any of that i park as if i was driving a, a toyota corolla yeah and then for whatever reason if we're leaving and i'm like okay i'll see you later blah 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 and she sees me walk into my car it's like oh like Can't in her it. head she makes a note like i didn't know he had that and then i don't brag about it either you know that's more attractive sure. I like that. And also guys, so let's just say they don't have nice things, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe mm -hmm. don't tell, let's just say you're a guitar player. You are, you're super in jujitsu. You're a model, you're a boxer. Again, like maybe mm -hmm. don't reveal those things and maybe post on their story, you doing it. And she's like, Oh, didn't know you did that. You know? So you don't have to have nice things, right? You, you can also have good hobbies. Yeah. You're good at those hobbies. And then you post them on your story 
And then she sees you doing it. Oh, he never talked to me about that. That's so interesting. You know what I mean? So you always have mm-hmm. to have, you know, the, the rolly or the sweet car as an example. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It can be with anything you're doing now. It's not a sin to state on a date that, Hey, I'm in the MMA. Yeah. True. You know what I mean? Um, but at the same time, like, just don't go too deep into it. Don't like start bragging like, oh, I got two black belts. I got, yeah. I just won my last uh, fighting round. I, yeah. I just beat my um, partner, blah, blah, blah. Like, don't do that. Let her discover that, like you said, through social media stories and you being in your element um, type of deal. All right. So now they, 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 they were, they were shutting the fuck up. Let the girl talk. They're on mm-hmm. the date. Things are going great um this i'm not gonna lie i even struggle with this sometimes i have my own place yet i'm still working on that because i'm in southern california where a a studio is like two bands but um um how do you how how do you usually try try to escalate to back to the place if you if you do that gotcha so it depends on how the date is going um I do notice if alcohol is involved, they, they tend to like loosen up, a, both of us tend to loosen up a bit more. And through natural conversation, like when you first meet them, they might come off like a bit shy and or nervous, oh, but like, time. exactly. Like after an hour and a half to hour and a half of talking, they might be able to loosen up. And then um, from there, it's as simple as like, uh, hey, what are you doing later the rest of the night? No, what I ask is, do you like wine? Or whatever and then mm-hmm. they'd be like oh yeah i love wine and i say well i have this so-and-so wine at my place if you're comfortable we can go back and talk more see if, you now, if you're comfortable like all the feminists watching oh he yeah. said alcohol is involved no he said if you're comfortable so yeah. get off his back <laughs> i'm coming exactly I, I always miss like <laughs> it's always up to them because yeah, keep in mind true. women women are the the gatekeepers to sex, sex and it's sure. not going to happen if they don't want it so so if you're comfortable, we can go back to my place, talk, have some wine. Never mention sex directly, mention, yeah. ever. Like girls love it when it happens naturally. Like, oh, we went from talking to a bar to now you're on top of me. I don't know how this happened. I don't know just, how this <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, they wanted to be done that way. So um, sometimes they'll say yes, and sometimes they'll say no. If they say no, just be like, hey. Um, no problem. Um, about to head out. Uh, have a good night. It was nice being you. Blah blah blah. Uh, do not say that you'll hit it back up. Don't say I'll, I'll text you. Blah. blah when am like, I see you again? Yeah. When am I see? Like, you? None of that. Just go about your way. And then if she was interested in you, she'll she'll hit you with the follow up text either that night when she gets home, or uh, the next day or a few days later. Every single time without fail. And okay. then that's when you set up the next date. Got you. So, um, important parts right there. Mm-hmm. So when you drop her off, guys, you don't have to say I had a great time. Just usually it's funny when I don't say it, they'll say it either through either they'll say it to me in the, in the car mm-hmm. or they'll text that to me. And I'll say, thank you. I appreciate that. And I, I don't say me too. I say, Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Right. Just, yeah, just yeah. keep it the way it is. Mm-hmm. And I let, I let them be on ice for a couple of days, one to two days. Mm-hmm. And a lot of guys in my comment section, you know, are swinging their fists in the air at this. It's like, guys, you have to give women a t- women time to miss you. If they have mm-hmm. zero time, you text them a second that you get in the house. Oh, did, did you have a good time? Oh, you're getting to bed now? Okay. Like, dude, you yeah. just spent the whole night with her. Relax. Exactly. Guys don't realize that women are attracted to indecisiveness and mysteriousness. So when a girl doesn't know how you feel about her, that makes her like you more. Absolutely. When a girl knows your cards and you've already shown it to her super fast and you're already crazy. acting, yeah, you're acting needy and clingy off bat. That's, that's a huge turnoff too. I agree. Um, a lot of, that's the thing. A lot of guys, their dynamic is to keep her interested in me. I have to keep in being engaged with her, keep nope. snapping her, keep texting her. You're like, no, do you like, let her mind wander off. Let the, let her mm-hmm. orbiters, you know, blow her phone up. And it's funny. It's always like girls always say, Oh, you know my phone's blowing up but not from the one i want and guess who yep. that is you know it's 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 the guy that it's not you know showing his cards and she she's she's not sure where he stands yeah the guy who doesn't show her attention is the guy she loves the most now yep. let, let, let's clear things up because i can hear the beta males coming now you don't <laughs> you don't okay we i recommend at max texting her three times a week right for example i'll, I'll be, give you guys even a, a breakdown Monday, hey, morning, I'm about to go, you know, 
to, to, to a workout and get my work done, I'll talk to you tonight. You talk to her tonight, seven, eight, eight o'clock. Hey, how are you? Talk a couple hours. One second. Is this, is this after the first date or before? Let's just say this is uh, after the first date, right? Gotcha, so gotcha. say a couple of days later, hit her up Monday. Okay. Don't text her on Tuesday. Wednesday, you maybe send her a meme. Thought about you, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Or like, oh, like, or like LMAO. So, so something like have a brief conversation with. Yeah. And then maybe set another date and then mm -hmm. see the day of the date. But like, try not to get into these long, how was your day mm -hmm. conversations. Save that for in person. Exactly. And another thing I'll say, I made a video on this and I love talking about this because when I broke it down, I was like, wow. There, for example, let me say me and you. Let's say we texted a girl a total of three hours. She bailed, whatever. It's life. Mm -hmm. Another guy texted her for 20 hours and got bailed on. So it's like, it's about investing this much non-sexual attention to get her sexual attention. A lot yep. of people give away this much non-sexual attention and still get bailed on. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly why you should keep your investment low with everything, including your non-sexual attention, which includes texting, talking Calling. on the phone. <laughs> Bro, I, I literally never talk on the phone or FaceTime ever. I can't. The only people who I do are the girls who I'm actively seeing exactly. who I've like, I've already been with. And even then they call me, they face on me and I still don't answer it half the time, but. Exactly. You know, it's, you got to keep that non-sexual attention to a minimum. And mm -hmm. some guys, you got to admit, they're not spoiled for choice. Like you and I, mm -hmm. uh, they, it's hard for them to get dates. So when they get one girl, they tend to overwhelm her, but dog, you got to just. You got to treat like a human being. You can't be treating like she's a trophy because she will choose up for somebody else. Exactly. I, even if you only have one option, bro, you still got to play the game. True. The, the game never ends, man. You got to you gotta play your cards right and do everything in the same exact manner as if you had a thousand options. Absolutely. So, yeah. Exactly. That's it. So, okay. Now we kind of already, you know, touched on it a little bit, but, you know, could be some more game we can drop. As mm -hmm. far as texting, you know, as far as your, your texting game, you know, what are the, some of the rules you apply? Yeah. So texting game, it depends on uh, what's going on with the girl. For example, I have different rules. Let's say I'll go through the order. So if I haven't met her yet, first date, like I said, texting very, very low. I set up the date as fast as possible. And if they try to keep the conversation going, I always say, Hey, let's not kill the mystery. Um, let's say the conversation for in person. Oh, wow. um, I'll, I'll hit you up uh, this day. And they're like, okay, okay have a good week. Cool. And then um, day of the date, let's say we're going out at 8 p.m. I'll hit them up around 12 p.m., usually afternoon. And I'll be like, hey, how's your day been? And they'll be like, oh, so-and-so, it's, it's been good. What about you? I'm like, oh, it's been good. Uh, um, and then I'll, I'll either like send the location of where we're going. I usually hold that off uh, for a minute just because it's like an indirect way to confirm a date without saying, hey, are we, are we still good? You know what I mean? It's funny. Hey, I was about to get to that point, guys. When you say, mm -hmm. hey, are we still? Girls are like, wait, are we still? And you're almost asking them a question. For me, yeah. for me though, um, I like that. I'm going to start using that too. But what I do too is go, go, hey, morning, you know, blah, blah. Cool. I'll see you at 5 p.m. Like mm -hmm. I, I'll see you at that time. Not, not, are we, can you are, just yeah. see you at 5 PM statement? Exactly. That's exactly. a good way to approach it too. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you said, so, so you said 12 o'clock text, little small talk. Then you mm -hmm. wait till what, like six to send them the location you guys are meeting. Uh, it, it depends on the interaction, but not necessarily wait till six. I will send okay. that as soon as I, as soon as I can, because okay. what I realized is sometimes I waited too late before okay. like that first text, I went to like 5 PM, 6 PM before. And the girl was like, Oh, sorry. I, I didn't hear from you. I thought, I thought you were flaking out on me. I already made other plans and okay. that has happened more than one time. So after that, I was like, okay. I'm going to start texting them like more early in the afternoon so that true. they know that I, I didn't just ghost them. Cause keep in mind, I haven't talked to them all week. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I'll send location as soon as I can. And most of the time, cause I only deal with like high interest girls or me girls who are man, really into me. No. So half the time they're the ones who are like, Hey, are we still on? Like, Absolutely. You know, um, you really got them. cause you know, exactly. You you know, they've been thinking about sending that text for like days, you know, mm -hmm. like, they, they, no, should I do it? No, I'm not going to do it. Should I do it? No, yeah. no. 
and then fuck it fine i'm gonna send it. Uh, i'm gonna send it they're like this man did he forget about me like, true so yeah i really don't have to do that text too often just because they always do it first that's what that's the beauty of high interest man i feel like a lot of guys pull their hair out over dealing with girls that don't like them yeah that's the biggest thing they pull their hair out bro i feel like that's one of the biggest issues with um what one of the biggest things that have gotten guys into red pill is dealing with low to medium interest girls who just play games with you um kind of use you and they don't know that they're being used and so facts yeah high interest facts. only facts so for me uh, i think i already you know touched on it previously but my texting game i try to keep it to max three times a week if i if that's if i you know even like you like that you know i try to you know set the date and get out of there because sometimes mm -hmm. you can legit talk your way out of that you know what you yep. know what i mean mm -hmm. so keep your talking you know to a minimum uh you know if you want to talk to maybe send her a little meme get a little laugh out of her and then move on to you know like instagram dm or something mm -hmm. but i wouldn't i wouldn't overdo it you got to keep that because you you, you want to seem even if you're not you want to seem like you're doing shit yeah yeah like this guy is wrapped in his purpose the gym his homeboys his hobbies he's not sitting around blowing my phone up and there's some women who are core high value who you know, on their purpose too, it may be a turn off to them. Like I'm trying here, I'm trying to study for my, my bar exam as a lawyer. And this mm -hmm. guy's blowing my phone up all day as if he has nothing to do. That's a turn off. Exactly. Yeah. Even if you're not busy, fake it till fake you it. make it like something. Don't, don't be replying to text super fast. Wait, wait a few hours. You know what I mean? And yeah, come off as busy if you can't do anything else. Yeah. Facts. So, um, after the, um, after the, you know, so they, they got the, they got the texting tips, first day tips. Now we can get into uh, helping men become more attractive. You made a video on this. So like you can kind of talk about what some things to help a man become more attractive. Yeah. So first thing is body is huge. Yeah. Um, I've noticed the types of girls I deal with when I, when I ask them like, yo, when they speak about the past people they dealt with, it's always athletes. Yeah. I'm talking, I'm talking NFL players, yeah, basketball, basketball you know, players, <laughs> I'm like, damn, like this girl was used with who? Devin, I, Devin Booker? Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so I noticed a trend there is girls like athletic dudes um, and also muscular dudes. Like, believe it or not, like this dad bot thing. Yeah, they'll try. <laughs> they'll that's try a false narrative. It. Yeah. Like girls are into guys with muscles. They feel more, like, more protected. True. It's more attractive. Believe it or not. I promise you, if you got your body right, you will have way more options than you know, not. So I feel like that's the biggest thing that I've obviously have dealt with being in the fitness space, getting my body right. Uh, two, and we talked about like the, the beer game, man, that I feel like that helped me out a lot. I started attracting like a bit, a bit more classier woman, like, like not, not ch children. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, to speak on the beard thing for me, for the longest time, I just let my hair grow, whatever it did, it did. I didn't really care. I was more focused on the hair up top mm -hmm. then i started you know looking up to people as far as fashion like mm -hmm. um odell beckham and stuff like that and i realized dog that beard really gives them that masculine look it really gives them that more masculine look so i'm gonna try it out so i recommend you go on amazon guys find a beard oil you know it's not too expensive it helps mm -hmm. your hair grow thicker you know and sometimes longer and you know and start to you know go to a barber and you know try get it lined up and yeah. I feel like that can really help your look. You know, you can go like shadow, sorry, you can go like shadow look or like a thicker beard look mm -hmm. and test I've it. done both. Yeah. Test the water, see what looks better on you. And eventually you'll find that look. And um, also as far as hair as well, since we're on the hair topic, some people are a fade away from being handsome. I swear yep. to God. I mm -hmm. swear to God, dog. It makes me cringe when I see guys have like sideburns thick down to like their ear. It's like, bro, if you just... Yeah found a good barber he can make you go from a six to he give you at least an extra point he give you an yeah. extra point at least no doubt no doubt so yeah the beard and figuring out what beard style works best what for you true. if you have a more defined jawline like myself then a shorter beard is going to yeah, work in your favor mm -hmm. because uh the angles and cuts of your jaw that's like the most attractive thing about a guy's face true, or one true. of the most attractive things and then another thing eyebrows so i talk I, about I, that too yeah yeah, a, a lot of guys like don't take care of their eyebrows, and I think it's too feminine. 
Yeah, it's definitely not. It look, makes you look way more attractive. It can boost you, you, man. I swear. I got my eyebrows started one time. I'm like, oh my god, dude. I, I, my face. It, I just look different. I don't know why, but I just look different. You know, mm-hmm. just go, maybe go once a month, guys. Get your eyebrows done, and I guarantee you'll see a difference. And now, mind you, if only way I, I know Austin gets his done is because I get mine done. So I'm always looking at guys' eyebrows. But most mm-hmm. of the time, guys don't say, "Hey, bro, get your eyebrows done." They wouldn't know. Unless they're yeah. super sharp, but I the the girl who's doing your eyebrows will know he's a man. Let's not make it too thin and too sharp. You know what I mean? Yeah, keep them clean. And also, I realize the thickness of the eyebrows matter a lot. So it does for men. Mm-hmm. Um, some guys have sparser eyebrows. Um, there's a few things you can use oil too, but also in which I used to grow my beard with this is minoxidil. Have you heard of it? Never heard of minoxidil. No, minoxidil. So it's basically like Rogaine. Oh, and okay. You get it like in a foam version of 5%, apply it to your beard, eyebrows, one to two times a day. Hair, hair growth, man. That's how I grew my beard from okay. nothing. Yep. I like that. I'm, I'm going to check that out because I realized that too. Dark, dark eyebrows. Like, for example, Drake has very, because uh, he's, his, you know, he's Jewish. So there's some Israeli in his blood. Yeah. So that, the thickness of his eyebrows and his beard definitely help out with giving them, him that more masculine look. Yeah, dense hair will always be more attractive on everything. Your hair, your eyebrows, your beard, everything. Got you. Another thing I'll add in, guys, is your style, okay? Yep. Listen, Mm -hmm. if you don't know what to wear, go to Austin's page, go to my page. We both have good fits on. So this this is what I'll say. You don't have to have a big budget, right? So you can legit go white tee from a store, 10 bucks, Mm -hmm. uh, red and black flannel, 15 bucks, Old Navy black jeans and like the newer not the older the newer uh 80s style converse that are more like they're not white they're more like a cream that's a fit and you look fly mm-hmm. and that style is never going to that's that that style is never going out of style right or you can go white tee denim jacket black denim converse like you can like it's a it's a fresh it's clean and you can do it on a budget you don't have to be pop and rich to yeah. get out these outfits you know what do you think about like yeah, I agree with you. What I realized about style is that fit matters the most. True. So remember that it's all about getting your body right first. And then after you get your body right, finding fit. clothes to proportionally fit your body and kind of assinuate your physique in the best light or in the best light uh, will do best for you. But it all depends on your style. Like you might listening to this, you might be like the skater kid who wears like kind of looser clothes, but um, you got to find what works um, kind of best for you. But you definitely don't have to be buying designer or oh God, yeah. any crazy expensive shit, you know? Facts. Another thing too, man, that helped me out because I was, I was born and raised in a white neighborhood. So jewelry was, jewelry was never really a thing, but dude, subtle light gold chain, subtle ring, just something small will help boost it too. So I recommend getting like a, nothing that hangs too low, you know, mm-hmm. some hanging down your chest, a yeah. little like, you know, choker, uh, rope chain, Cuban yeah. link uh, bracelet ring, just some small touches that definitely help your style as well. Yep. Um, I realized that too. Like uh, I, a lot of dudes are wearing like these little hoop earrings because of me now. Oh, I mean, not because of me, but like I, I saw uh, like Bryson Tiller wearing it. And I, everybody said I look like him. Back, so. back, back. I was like back in 2012, 13, that trap soul album was everything. Yeah. So I started wearing that. That boosted my attractiveness. I always get compliments from girls on that. Um, and like you said, the little jewelry stuff, watches, bracelets, uh, light chains, stuff like that. It that goes a long way. way. Facts. Well, I'm, I'm going to end it on this, good. brother. Go uh, ahead. And uh, the next four, five years, what is the goal with Austin Dunham as far as your brand and what you're trying to do? Yeah, so the so next four or five years, what I realized is that four to five years is a long time. It is. So grinding. It's five years ago, was that 2016, 2015? I didn't even get into i started social media like from zero my youtube channel fitness back in 2016 so look at how much has grown over five years and where i'm at within five years like even a lot has changed in two years so within five to six years from now i feel like my influence and reach will be is at a super super high level Mm -hmm. i'll be involved in multiple businesses and have acquired a lot of different assets um, that bring money to me. I'll be helping guys on a, a bigger mm-hmm. level, maybe even start a podcast, like you said. Yeah. And I just honestly, as girls like to say, living my best life, man. At that point in time, yeah, I've been in the game for over a decade. Perfect. 
Yeah, man, that's good, man. For myself, um, I really want to grow this brand to where, uh, man, you, you ever heard of the 21 century thing over in Florida where they have like all these old school red pill dudes like Rolo and like they all have a talk? You never heard of that? No? No. Uh -uh. Okay, so I think it's, it's, on, it's on YouTube. It's like 21st century or 21 something. It's basically the OG red pill dudes who mm -hmm. are in their 40s kicking game to young men. It's a, it's a conference in Florida. Okay. I was thinking about, you know, in four or five years from now, uh, of course, uh, the goal is to get more because the people on TikTok are cool who make red pill content. I'm cool with all of them, but the mm -hmm. goal up to the YouTubers, right? So how dope would it be to have you yourself, you know, all, all the YouTubers, right? Like a panel. Yeah. All we have our, our own conference and, mm -hmm. you know, only issue is though, the, our demographic is younger where those old red pill dudes, they're all like six figure earners. So of course we can't charge these kids two bands to come to our conference yeah true like you know we, we get like a smaller place we charge me like a hundred a hundred two hundred dollars for the in person and do a stream and do a mm -hmm. super chat you know, run you know run that thing up mm -hmm. and you know all of us we talk on different topics fitness self-improvement women you know and we all everyone has their own little keynote you have your own little keynote i have my keynote and we just legit like go another level you know what yeah I mean? That yeah, that'll be that'll be insane. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people would appreciate that. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. you know, the, so I feel like that's dope. I want to create a book, but I want more experience. You know, I feel like, all right, I'm getting really attractive women right now with with me, like very medium level clout and good look. So imagine when the clout goes from medium to large with the with the bank account and the handsomeness, I'm experience a whole new level of dating that I want to make sure that I keep in my back pocket for, for a book when I write. Mm -hmm. um, also, and of course, when I create courses, that's everything, but I want to become more uh, successful before I make the courses. I think the courses look sexier than my own place in LA and not my mom's house. Um, yeah. I would, I also want to uh, do make this merch. I want to get to the point where people wear my merch and don't know who I am. Like that's how pop in the merch gets. Um, the brand so bigger than you. Yeah, exactly. Like defund mm -hmm. something like that's the biggest thing. Uh, some people, some people on TikTok don't do, they don't make a brand. So, yeah. you know, do you know who the Nelk boys are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I've, I've, I've shot with them a couple of times and YouTube doesn't even pay them. They don't even get paid from YouTube because they've been really? had so many strikes. Oh, so wow. Damn. Strictly merch sales that makes them rich mm -hmm. because they, the, the brand is so good that they're able to sell merch. And like, I want to say like, like a Supreme level, you know, Supreme, like the street. Yeah. Supreme, like they mm -hmm. drop clothes and they're gone in 30 seconds. Damn, that's crazy. That's a huge influence to have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that's dope. Yeah. So I'm trying to get to a level where I'm dropping, you know, all these dope ass merch ideas. And, you know, that's super good. And the last thing I'll say, I want to have a, a circle of, of high value men, right? Because that, that, mm -hmm. that's really where it, it, okay. I don't need people's respect, but I'd like it. That'd be dope, right? So for example, you know, uh, shoot, you know, have, maybe Kevin Samuels, we're on, we're, we're talking on the podcast, me and AMS talking on, you know, so like having people mm. who are in my space who are doing much better than, better than me, we're all friends. We're all cool. We grab drinks together when we're in the same city, you know, yeah. so that's, that's the goal. And just and to keep changing people's lives. Cause dude, a lot of young kids are being feminized by the LGBT and all everything, everything that's going on. So they find our channel and they change. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. damn man you got you got a lot of goals and aspirations but i feel like you would definitely reach all of them man especially yeah. on your trajectory where you are going at right now mm -hmm. like all that is super attainable of course likewise for yeah. you i appreciate you coming mm -hmm. on and uh i'll uh, definitely uh oh wait hold on i'm gonna uh hold on guys hold on hold on <laughs> i'm gonna uh i'm gonna send i'm gonna send uh you know austin this just legit landed yesterday oh I'm doing, oh. I'm doing the uh i'm doing the uh drop for these soon i'm just gonna do nice. like influencer marketing and make Ooh. a dope ass ad for these hoodies right and there. shirts so i'm gonna send this to you in a medium threw me off i thought you were like, <laughs> <laughs> threw me off with that medium so like, you're small as hell okay, I'm muscular a muscular but not like big i'm like okay yeah like my my frame is like kind of yeah. normal okay but i'm just muscular got you hey man i'll hold more of your time i appreciate you coming on brother and i'll see you soon man of course man thanks for having me see you peace no, no.